The principal stages in the history of the sensations by virtue of which we make everyone accountable for his actions, that is to say, of the moral sensations, are as follows. First of all, one calls individual actions good or bad, quite irrespective of their motives, but solely on account of their useful or harmful consequences. Second, however, one forgets the origin of these designations and believes that the quality good and evil is inherent in the actions themselves, irrespective of their consequences, thus committing the same error as that by which language designates the stone itself as hard, the tree itself as green, that is to say, by taking for cause that which is effect. Then, one consigns the being good or being evil to the motives and regards the deeds in themselves as morally ambiguous. One goes further and accords the predicate good or evil no longer to the individual motive but to the whole nature of a man, out of whom the motive grows as the plant does from the soil. Thus, one successively makes men accountable for the effects they produce, then for their actions, then for their motives, and finally for their nature. Now one finally discovers that this nature, too, cannot be accountable, inasmuch as it is altogether a necessary consequence and assembled from the elements and influence of things past and present. That is to say, that man can be made accountable for nothing, not for his nature, nor for his motives, nor for his actions, nor for the effects he produces. One has thereby attained to the knowledge that the history of the moral sensations is the history of an error, the error of accountability, which rests on the error of freedom of will. Schopenhauer concluded otherwise, thus, because certain actions bring after them a feeling of displeasure, consciousness of guilt, there must exist a sense of accountability, for there would be no ground for this feeling of displeasure if not only were all the actions of man determined by necessity, which is in fact the case of you also held by this philosopher. But man himself acquired his entire nature with the same necessity, which Schopenhauer denies. From the fact of that feeling of displeasure, Schopenhauer believes he can demonstrate a freedom which man must have acquired somehow, not in respect of his actions, but in respect to his nature, freedom to be thus or thus, that is to say, not to act thus or thus. From the essay, the sphere of freedom and accountability, there follows, in his opinion, the operari, the sphere of strict causality, necessity, and accountability. That feeling of displeasure appears to relate to the operari, to be sure. To that extent it is in error. In truth, however, to the essay, which is the deed of the free will, the basic cause of the existence of an individual. Man becomes that which he wills to become. His willing precedes his existence. Here the erroneous conclusion is drawn that from the fact of a feeling of displeasure, there can be inferred the justification, the rational admissibility of this feeling of displeasure. And from this erroneous conclusion, Schopenhauer arrives at his fantastic concept of so-called intelligible freedom. But a feeling of displeasure after a deed is absolutely not obliged to be rational. On the contrary, it cannot be, since it rests precisely on the erroneous presupposition that the deed need not have taken place of necessity, Thus, it is because man regards himself as free, not because he is free, that he feels remorse and pangs of conscience. This feeling is, moreover, something one can disaccustom oneself to, and many people do not feel it at all in respect of actions which evoke it in others. It is a very changeable thing, tied to the evolution of morality and culture and perhaps present in only a relatively brief span of world history. No one is accountable for his deeds, no one for his nature. 
to judge is the same thing as to be unjust. This also applies when the individual judges himself. The proposition is as clear as daylight, and yet here everyone prefers to retreat back into the shadows and untruth from fear of the consequences.